Ah, being a YouTuber in public, you get a lot of looks when you have your selfie stick in your phone recording yourself in the supermarket. <laughs> Something that you hear a lot of in 2022 is inflation and how it's been its highest in 40 years. And you especially start to see that in the supermarket because I've noticed a huge increase in food prices. And these high food prices and inflation really have been putting my anxiety in high alert, which is triggering my hoarding because my hoarding disorder will never go away completely, neither will my anxiety. What changes is my behaviors and how I'm going to cope when my anxiety or that urge to hoard is triggered. What positive strategies did we bring in to bring me back to a state of calmness, peace, and rational thinking? And that's exactly what this episode is all about, addressing the fears of inflation that's causing the anxiety and the urge to hoard, and also the ways that we can cope with that so that we can continue moving forward in our healing journey. For example, we use a lot of olive oil in our house and it is on sale. I'm only going to buy two bottles, not four, not the max, not as much as I can, just two bottles because that'll last me. The raw truth is that I cannot control inflation and being anxious about it is a waste of my energy. But what I can control is my spending. And that's why we're focusing on food because that's the budget that I realize has been impact the most. That's where I've seen a huge increase in. And that's why we're going to get into this pantry we're going to take inventory of all of the food that I have, see what's good, see what's expired, let go of what's expired, and make sure that we have a good meal planning system in place. And that just starts with basic organization and food inventory. And last month when we were decluttering all that paper, I had found this, a weekly meal planner. I had bought it from Dollar General like two years ago and never used it. So now we're gonna start. This is the perfect opportunity and I'm more of a paper pen girl, so that's why I'm gonna go this route instead of an online app. So now let's start organizing this pantry so that I can have a proper inventory of everything. Now. We had cleaned and organized this last year. Last year, there was no baskets or no organization whatsoever. It was just everything thrown in there. And I can link that video in the description box below if you'd like to see how we started from a hoarded hot mess to an organized pantry. And honestly, for us, 10 months in, this is actually pretty good. Could we stand to improve a little bit? Sure we could. And overall, as a family, I think we've made amazing progress together. And that maybe, honestly, all I have to do is just go through it once a month so that we don't end up having four open bags of goldfish at once and then buying more without realizing it. <laughs> and I think that would just make a huge difference. And right now, all we're doing is just condensing the boxes. We buy a lot of the same products and sometimes we leave some empty boxes behind by accident. So we're just kind of getting rid of the empty boxes, getting rid of anything that's stale or not good to eat anymore and just downsizing the amount of stuff that's in here. And these baskets that we're decluttering first are our snack baskets. We are definitely a snacky snack kind of family. We love to pick at food. <laughs> so that's why it's important to start with this side first. And of course, we're going to give the basket a nice wipe down because there was a surprising amount of crumbs in there. <laughs> And because we're such a snacky snack kind of family, this actually might be a good opportunity to maybe cut back on the snacks a little bit. <laughs> like maybe instead of eating directly out of the bag, we can put it in a bowl. And maybe instead of three snacky snacks, maybe <laughs> we could cut it back to one snack. 
And it's just to help us be more healthier because let's be honest, as much as it tastes good, it's really not that healthy for us. And we'll just make this into a positive thing because let's face it, mama put on a couple pounds that I really don't need. <laughs> so we'll turn this into an opportunity to become more healthier. And as I continue cleaning this basket and also the bottom of this cabinet, I want to share why the inflation can be very triggering to a hoarder. When you have hoarding disorder, it has deep roots in the lack mentality, the scarcity of it all. There's not enough. We won't survive. So I need to hoard and save everything so that I can provide for my family. Back when the boys were babies and I made the decision to leave a very good full-time job so that I could raise them, it really created a strain in our finances. Our mortgage was 60% of the income that came in. And we really were living paycheck to paycheck. Money was so tight. And that triggered my anxiety because I wanted to provide for my family while being a stay-at-home mom caring for the boys. So of course, I went to Old Faithful. I went back to hoarding. I went back to saving every little thing that I had. That way, I had it on hand. And my husband didn't have to work extreme overtime just to afford something because I already had it squirreled away in the basement. I found so much stuff for free on trash day, curb day. People throw away fantastic, nice things. There was free cycle back then. I literally provided birthday gifts and Christmas through free cycle, picking up old toys for the babies because they didn't know any better. And of course, what did that do? That reinforced that hoarding always saves me. Hoarding was always my security blanket because I was able to provide. But the question was, where's the line? Where's the limit to being frugal, resourceful, recycling, reusing, and hoarding? Of course, the hoarding has no limit. There is no limit. It is endless. We just save and save and collect and squirrel it away until the anxiety is gone. Or when you're frugal and resourceful, you know the limit. You know that you don't need a hundred paper towel rolls <laughs> in your basement. Just having the two extra packages is fine. So now that we can identify the behaviors and mindset of hoarding disorder, how do we turn this around? How do we turn this around so that the scarcity doesn't trigger anxiety or depression? And the answer is, we're doing it right now. We're controlling what we can control. And that is organizing the pantry, taking inventory of what I have. Because right here, I have three cornstarches, which basically means that at three different points, I thought I needed cornstarch and I ran out and bought another container. So I actually ended up spending more money because now I have to throw out the container that's expired, the original one that I couldn't find that made me want to buy the new one. <laughs> so just by having these simple organized baskets, they're labeled, I can clearly see what is inside of them. So if I think I need cornstarch or sugar, I can go right to the place that I know exactly where it's at. I can see I still have sugar. I don't need to buy any more. I still have pancake mix. I don't need to go out and buy any more of that. I have to make it very simple, clear, easily labeled so that I can see what I have. That helps my ADHD. It's got to be quick. And on the top shelf, we're just going to continue what we've been doing. We're going to be letting go of things that are expired. Because if you ever had food poisoning, you know the pure hell <laughs> that you will experience from that. That was the worst experience of my life. So you don't mess around with food that's expired. Yeah, maybe you can play around past the expiration dates, but you're not gonna hear that from me. <laughs> so as you can see, when I labeled my bins last year, 
I kept it so simple. I didn't go into subcategories and more subcategories. I actually really didn't have the room to do that anyway. But for me, somebody who has ADHD, it has to be at its simplest form. You know that I have dry food and pasta. It has to be quick for me to see. And my ADHD was another huge factor in my hoarding. Because I struggled with categorizing, because I struggled with too much stuff and it was overwhelming, it was another reason why I didn't tackle it. It was almost like my mind became so jumbled that I couldn't find the starting point to the end point. So I just didn't deal with it because it made me feel anxious. And that's why we do this. Even if it takes us multiple times to get it right, every time I do this, it gets easier, quicker, and I can understand it and I can find those starting points so much easier. Here's the dry food. Here's the pasta. I know exactly where it's at. Here's the soup. Here's cans. Here's fruit. Here's nuts and condiments. This makes it so much easier now because I can get my meal planner and see what I have and create meals from what is already stored in the house. And if I need something, I can very easily write it onto my shopping list. It's very easy to see what I need to buy more of. And this brings back that level of control. I can control the inventory. I know I'm going to spend less money on food now because I can clearly see what we need and what I have to use before it expires. And feeling that sense of control also keeps my anxiety calm. Now, this is what we're letting go of. A lot of it just needs to be recycled because it's empty boxes, but some of it did expire. And I'm not going to put pressure on myself or guilt myself to be like, see, 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 you're throwing away food. That's not fair. Give yourself some grace. It's okay. We're getting better with this. We're going to improve our organization and our inventory. That way we're not wasting so much. So when it comes to the high inflation this year, I just need to have faith that it'll be okay. And God will always provide for us and I can control what I'm able to control. And that is our spending habits. And right now, I'm creating a March no spend challenge. I haven't done that in a while. And honestly, it makes a huge difference. So especially for this year, I'm going to bring it back. Now, the gentleman who had taken my paper copy, scanned it in, made it a downloadable PDF on my website, has taken on a new job and has been so incredibly busy. So until I can figure out how to do that myself, if you would like your own copy of the March No Spend Challenge, please email me at a hoarder's heart and I will email you the PDF directly. And this is a very simple no spend challenge. You make up your own rules, you make up your own goals, and you color in the days that you don't spend any money. It has made a huge difference in our finances, and I am definitely bringing this back.